after the ball is over, after the skein is done, after the die lots finished, and you are short just one. Many a knitter has made. A tearful and desperate call, pleading with their local yarn shop, go after that ball. Hi, welcome to Penhook and Needles, episode 101. The um, song you just heard, Overhead. Wow, that makes it sound like we're being aged. Um, I'm still in work mode. She just got home from work. Um, but that was After the Ball is Over by Ren Ross, obtained from moviealley.com for media. The artwork is by my husband, Mr. P.H.N., as George has named him. Um, we're eating breakfast. We're eating free. breakfast. Well, so this is dinner. Yeah, breakfast for me. This is chai tea, and I think this is a spinach, spinach feta wrap cheese from Daily Grind. Uh, my daughter called me. I was still in my workout clothes, hadn't taken a shower, so my hair is kind of still wet. Um, I said, let's podcast so we can get things with the boyfriend done without having to rush because we have a lot to say today. So it's okay. Took a quick shower. She brought me daily grind stuff, so I'm happy. It is Monday as opposed to Tuesday because her schedule's kind of messed up right now. So we're doing it a day early, and it is approximately 9.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I can't see a clock. Um, um, it is... Um, oh, 8.39. Oh, 8.39. Okay, so we are early. So anyway, we welcome all new and returning viewers. I am Lady Fernico, also known as Marlisha. No, that's not right. <laughs> I'm Marlisha, also known as Lady Fernico. My name is Talia, also known as Princess Kinjipsy. And that's right. Yes. Okay, good. Um, we want to welcome all new and returning viewers. We are very happy to have you with us. If you are new and you haven't joined the group officially, please do so. We are a fun group. We have a lot of uh, cow cows. Don't forget about your chai. Yes, I see it here. I, I did say my chai. Soy chai. I meant to drink your chai. Oh, I've been drinking it. Okay, and I have white chocolate milk. Um, so if you're new and, and you're just, we're glad that you are checking us out, feel free to join us. We have a lot of fun things going on. Prizes can be won. Right now we're in the middle of an autism awareness cow that will run to the end of June. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, if you're returning viewers, thank you for coming back. We're glad to have you with us again. I want to welcome three new members who have made their presence known. First one is, I think it's Soky Knitter, S-O-K-Y Knitter. That's Sally. Um, welcome, Sally. Mm -hmm. You Creek Cottage, who is Renee. And Barb624, who does not have a name, but I'm assuming it's Barbara. Um, so welcome aboard. We're glad to have you with us. Feel free to jump in the threads anywhere that you feel like you might say, want to say something. Um, before we go into the autism awareness, we had a question on the boards from his handmaid, who is Diana. We don't have a questions form, and I don't think it's necessary. You guys can ask questions Whatever. wherever they hit you, and we'll answer them. Um, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. So this question is for Talia from Diana, um, who is his handmaid. I, Talia hadn't seen, had a chance to see it yet. And the question is, Talia, what do you put in your notebooks about your projects? And she apologized if, she, if you already told people, but she, she didn't know. So. No problem. For example, um, well, I reuse notebooks. Um, but, for example, I have here the baby blankets notebook. And I put down the rows that... I'm working on, and um, whether it's right side or wrong side, and I cross them off as I go along, so I know where I'm at. Um, and it'll, it'll divide. I'll divide into different sections. For example, this one. Yeah, let go. Um, there's a blue sweater. I have the pattern. Um, green won't be better, but, okay. So, mo not all patterns will tell you, um, a, uh, 
what number each row is. So I'll divide the pattern into what seems to be logical sections. For example, if I'm working on the yoke, I will then divide step, I will write down numbers next to what I consider steps. So, yeah, and then I'll number it in the pattern, and I'll write then in my little notebook, I'm trying to be as specific as I can without showing the pattern, which is not a free pattern. Um, then, it's just a way of keeping track. Yeah, it's a way of keeping track. I'll write in my notebook, yoke, and then all the numbers of the rows um, with repeats and like. And it's just how I keep track of how much I've done, how much I need to do. And where you're at. And where I'm at, yeah. Um, without having to, it's just the way my brain is organized. Um, if I have too many scratch outs on the pattern itself, I get confused. This way my pattern re remains relatively clean. And it's my notebook that gets really messy. See, her way is different from mine. I will take a pattern and I will explode the, if it goes on too many, for too many, like if you have a complicated lace section, I will break down like this vertically instead of across like this because for me, my brain just can't function, <laughs> can't fathom that. I get confused. Mm -hmm. Taya has her own section, her own way of doing it. She just writes things down. So that's all it is. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you for the um, information about Lamb's Pride. This is I'm just my notes are on my Kindle here. Um, but um, also, uh, Diane, if um, that was confusing, if anyone else found that confusing, just ask me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she'll just write it down and confuse you more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, Diane, I did want to thank you for the suggestion about Lamb's Pride. I don't normally like mohair at all, but I'm always on the lookout for new yarns to work with that might change my mind. Maybe I'll like something like Lamb's Pride, so I appreciate you telling us about that. And that um, is the stuff I have. It is Lamb's Pride? Good sweater. Do you like I'm it? Pretty, I haven't used it yet. Oh, okay. All right. Um, for our Autism Awareness Cal, we have finished our first month. We are into May, which is our second month, so that's exciting. There mm -hmm. are a ton of projects. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting to see all the different projects, all the different colors. The different versions of George's Braided Bright are really fun mm -hmm. to see. Um, you know, cowls and somebody made one that was an eight braid. I think it was eight strands. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I think it was um who was it? Now I can't remember the name. I can see her avatar but I can't I can't remember her name. But it's really beautiful. And she she made a skirt too. Oh wow. Yeah, but not out of the braid it bright, just out of the same yarn. Oh okay. Um so it was it was really cool. So that is going strong. We're looking forward to seeing all more all <laughs> <laughs> more of the uh Whips and FOs. It runs from April 1st to June 30th, so you have plenty of time to get in more whips and more progress, uh, more uh, FOs. I can't talk this morning. Please tag your project projects with uh, AA 2014, so Autism Awareness 2014, when you post. And please let us know if you're using the Braided Bright Cow or the Winding Journey pro uh, projects because those get an extra over and above chance at a prize. Okay. Extra pointage. Yes, extra pointage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we are co-hosting with um, the lovely Emily of Fibertown podcast group, and she's um, she's called Chain of Pools. Mm -hmm. And we are also co-hosting with Juliana from the Equal Opportunity Crafter group. And Juliana is the one who did the Wine and Journey mm -hmm. uh, patterns that we are uh, featuring along with George's Braid It Bright. Mm -hmm. So their podcast groups are also involved. If you would like to triple dip, you need to be members of all three of the group that you want to get the prize from. So you need to be a member of that group. Mm -hmm. So if you want a triple dip, you have to be a member of all three groups. Mm -hmm. um, their rules might be slightly different than ours, but essentially they're the same. So just take a look and see what they're allowing. I know that Emily is allowing almost anything mm -hmm. um, in terms of knitting, crocheting, weaving. But Emily's is going on for a short amount of time. Yes, she's only going through May. However, if you are... Um, a member of Emily's group and have not yet joined either our group or Juliana's. Equal Opportunity uh, Crafters group, and you want and you don't have enough time to finish it by May, we are going till the end of June. Mm -hmm. So you will we'll still give have, you an extra month. We'll give you an extra month in our two groups. Okay. Um, let's see here. Our projects must be knitted or crocheted in our group. Whip photos one pro one per project per week. The FOs, whenever you're finished with the FO, doesn't matter if you put a whip in there or not. If you finish something the same week, 
you get to put the FO in as well. It's there on its own credit. Yes. Um, let me see here. All this information is on the on the RAV group, so I don't want to go through it again because we have a lot to talk about. Uh, let me see here. Prizes. The prizes we are we have been uh, very blessed with our prize donations this time around. Uh, Emily, who is Fibertown Chain of Fools, has donated one of her patterns and three skeins of yarn that will go to two different people. And Juliana from Equal Opportunity Crafter, our other uh, co-host, has donated one of her patterns. And if you go to her group or Emily's group, they have their own prizes as well. And then we had a skein of yarn donated by one of our viewers, yes. our lovely viewers, um, who is Robin, Hank's mom. Thank you very much. We have three project bags, two from Cloverbird and one from Knitting's My Bag. They are those are not the project the bags. I was just moving No, on. no, no. <laughs> uh, the Knitting's My Bag one you've seen several times is the puzzle pieces. And I have shown Cloverbirds as well um, last, time. last time around. They're, they are... If there are two small bags and one medium available. Hey guys, uh, Flipper is also having a. Is she still having a sale? I think the sale might still be on. I'm not positive. Last time I looked at the at the um, website, which was yesterday, it still said 10% off. So if you're in the market for a bag, small or medium, she has a 10% off. And there's some awesome bags. I just don't yeah. need any more um, medium bags right now. Yeah, I can't justify I can, it. I can't justify it. And right now, after Maryland Sheep and Wool, I can't really afford it. <laughs> so. Um, okay, I don't think, oh, I forgot, I, Sarah Jane, honestly, I love your stuff, and I keep forgetting uh -huh, yours, I have uh -huh, to remember. Uh -huh. You see how much she loves you? I love Sarah Jane's stuff, it is gorgeous. See, Sarah Jane, how Five. much she loves you? Five patterns from Sarah Jane. And that's how appreciative she is, Sarah, she just forgets she all about you. Always bust my, meow. Okay, anyway. Meow. Meow. Anyway. wrong with you? <laughs> Hi, I just got some toilet shift. Uh, that's her excuse for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, so we have five from Sarah Jane, which are, uh, they're crochet patterns, but they are awesome, and they're amazing, and I just love them, so I'm really jealous of you guys. Um, she has a really cute hat I really like, and I might actually have to crochet it if I were to actually pick up my crochet hook again. Right. I have to um, go to... Uh, her, her shop and pick up a pattern. Actually, it's a set I want to get. So anyway, that's ne that's not here or there right now. <laughs> okay, good. Let me not get sidetracked. We have too much to do here. Uh, oh yes, we are donating an eight dollar pattern to Fiber Towns Podcast Group and to Equal Opportunity, one each for a winner in their in their groups. Okay, you said you have three hooks. Yes, and I have three hooks. Hold on one second. Did we eat with breakfast, kiddo? Almost. Oh, okay. sorry. I don't no, you're know. you're good, kiddo. Just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have three three projects. So what do you want to do here? Um, because I have graphic novel after. I guess I should go first. Yes, you probably should. Let me just make this one stitch. Okay. Let me finish my breakfast before it gets cold. So, um, please feel free to get something to eat or drink. I think we already said that, but if there is repeating since we're eating, and I feel guilty about eating in front of people. This is, I don't feel too guilty because this is the way I'm going to stay awake because I got off from the 12-hour shift. So, as I emphatically bite my cheese because that makes some great point. <laughs> okay, anywho, the first hook, which is not a hook that I'm going to talk about. I have nothing on the hooks that, are, that is currently being worked on. So... Oh, hey, our autism morning is, um, guys. Mm. I forgot about them. How could I forget about them sitting on them? <laughs> oh, that's how you forgot about them. Here, Ollie. There we go. Here they are. They welcome you. Oh, <laughs> Mom, that makes me think, when you said Ollie, that makes me think of, um, the, I was listening to the, um, Star Wars, um, that documentary, it's a director's Content. cut. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that they actually, when they were doing the sound of the guy whose branch cord died, um, they said, well, think of like a sad stand, standy sound. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it does sound like a sad stand sound. sound. Well, anyway. It actually is like one of the saddest parts in the third Star Wars. Anyway. Here's our 
autism awareness animals. animals. Now, somebody had mentioned, who was it that made something that was going to be um, a member, or not a member, a, uh, a mascot in absentia. Oh. Uh, so I forget who that was who said that, but yes. Okay, so they, they say hello. I and apparently um, Ms. Sherbert has a uh, interested snake. Yes, who, who could have been a boyfriend out there, but a snake Oops. friend, male snake Sorry friend, that, guys. But okay, anyway. now go ahead to so get to your whip. Whip it. So yeah. this is the Lush pattern, which is the Ink Heart Project. Um, it's made by it's um, designed by Tin Can Knits. Um, I'm using US three and US six needles. Miss Babs, yeah, so what is came in the fountain pen colorway, making it for mom. And the pattern was given to me by Nurse Kim Nitz, making size 33, and I am in the middle of a row, because that's the way I roll. You're pulling a Lindsay. I am pulling a Lindsay. For those of you who don't know what that means, because the Three Stitches um, podcast has had to take a little bit of a break, so you might not know who they are, check them out on YouTube. No, YouTube, no, WordPress. WordPress. Yeah, they're WordPress. Lin uh, Lindsay is one of three co-hosts, two daughters and a mother. And this is called the Three Stitches Podcast. And pulling a Lindsay means that you're in the middle of a roll because apparently Lindsay <laughs> always used to do that. Yeah, and I am all tangled up. Oh, dear. It's just on my ends. And I'm trying to make this somewhat so you can see it. Um, I'm at the point in this sweater, I say, as I, you know, deal with many strands. Okay, there we go. Um, where I have done my decreases for the waist. I have done my increases for the hips. And I'm going to flip this so it's not inside out anymore. Um, I have to be careful. Um, there we go. Mm -hmm. Needles. Yeah, I, I see them. Um, so right now, I am getting to the point where I can start thinking about the ribbing. It's pretty. Very pretty. And the lace work is showing up much better this week. Yeah, we have much better lighting today. Maybe because it's early morning. Thank you, know. Talia, for insisting that we uh, podcast right after work. You're welcome, Mom. Yeah, we can't do this all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm punchy. Hi. Yeah. Um, I can punch you. Ew! I'm holding your sweater. Uh huh. Do you wish to damage your sweater? No. Then don't punch me. But I want to. Sweater. Pretty. Okay. Good. <laughs> um. I love the color. Truly. It's a gorgeous color. It's been a joy to work with. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed working with Babs, and I am happy that I had several Miss Babs skein uh, sweater worths. Of uh, sweater worths? And sweater worths available. In, oh. So, yes, it has gotten work. It has gotten love. It is in the point of measuring. And you can't see, I think it's, is that inkwell, ink well, right? Ink um, something? I think it's what it's Fountain pen. Fountain pen. Um, you would think that it, it looks like it's very solid, but it does have some slight variation to it, which makes it really pretty. It gives it a little depth. Yes. And she does a wonderful job, Di. Oh, yes, she does. It's quite amazing. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's this project. It is. Okay. Let me see. I guess I will get the thing that's on top, since that's probably easiest to deal with right now. I did do some work on my... Um, my Dragonfly Cardigan, which is from the Sunday Cardigan Pattern by Shannon Mullet Bowlesby. I didn't get a whole lot of knitting, or well, I haven't done any knitting, um, crocheting done this week because we well, were podcasting a little early. We had Marilyn Sheep and Wool to get ready for, and the whole week was just kind of strange. So I didn't get a whole lot done, but I did work on this sweater a little bit. Pull it out. Some way, the balls of yarn. But where's the project? I do not know the precious. Where is my precious? There it is. Okay. And it doesn't look like I got a whole lot done. I guess I really didn't, but I, I did a few rows on this. I think I'm about 12 or 13 rows in now. Whoops, I think I lost the hook in my bag. But this is what it looks like, and you can see how pretty it looks. I didn't make a whole, I, I honestly shouldn't probably show it to you because it doesn't look that much different. Well, you want to, so. But I want to, so there it is. 
And I love the colors. I think it's going to be really pretty in the sweater because the sweater is a simple pattern. So the patterning um, can show itself off to full effect. And I think this is a self patterning. I don't, this is not really, it's not really a uh, variegated, but it's not a self striping. I guess it could be a pooling. I'm not sure what you call that. If anybody knows what that's called, feel free to tell me. Whatever it is, I think it's really pretty. It looks like it looks like lakes in the woods is what it looks like. I really like it. Mm, she actually went around this time. Oh, she did. Good for her. Davina has a habit of um, she likes to be part of things. So if she sees we're in here, a lot of times she'll come right through when we're talking instead of going the other. Because our, our kitchen has four doors. Mm -hmm. Four. One, two, four doors. Um, so she can go around in many different directions. She likes to come through and see us. She, she usually likes to come right between you and your talk. Right, because she, cause she wants to see what's going on. That's fine. This time she remembered we were podcasting, so she she went around. So I'm proud of her. Be very, good. very proud of her. So this is um, my first skein of yarn, uh, about maybe halfway through it, I guess. And I'm using a H hook. And I'm using, I'm not using uh, Unforgettable. I am using Dragon uh, Dragonfly Fibers sock yarn, and I think it's Dragon Sock. I think that's what it's called. Oh, is it Dragonfly Swords? Dragonfly is a colorway, oh. um, I believe. I thought Dragonfly was a colorway for the other yarn. It was. Were they both Dragonfly? I think so, yes. I, and I will, I will get that for you when I find my ball bands. I think she did that last week, too. I know. I'm a bad podcaster. Yes, you are. But I'm enjoying this immensely. I'm having fun with it. If I can just sit down and do it. I've, I've kind of felt like, um, okay, I need to do that project, and I want to do that project later, maybe. I just haven't really had any... I've been distracted, I think. So hopefully I'll have more to show you when we podcast next, which I'm not sure when that will be. Do you have that funny schedule again next week? I do. I was thinking that Saturday, um, probably. Yeah, whatever day I don't go out with Thomas, right. um, we should we'll have to podcast. Right. So we might be as early as Saturday because she's got classes on certain dates, and then Mother's Day. The computers, the hospital's turning over to new computers. Right. So it's kind of messing with our schedule. So you may see us um, early next week, so as not to miss something. We don't want to miss a podcast. Yep. Alright, so it's my sweater is in my after all that rambling, my sweater is in my large chai tea plover bird bag, which I love very much. And it is going to go away so that Talia can talk about her project. Okay, so the next one I'm going to talk about is well the one I'm working on. Um let me just count one, two, three, four. I'm sorry about the noise with that cup. I'm trying to keep my tea warm. Um, so what I'm working on is Turquoise Love, which is the Lots of Love pattern um, by 10 hours or less. Um, I'm using US 17 needles and Lions brand Pound of Love in a turquoise colorway. Um, this is a lot bluer than I anticipated. I think it's pretty. Uh, it's, it's very pretty, but I don't know why in my head it was not nearly as blue. <laughs> I don't think it's all, I mean, it's blue, but it's, it's definitely turquoise. So, I like it. It's not going to show the full effect. I'm going to chat about it when I continue to knit on it. It's very heavy. Um, it is very heavy. It's very um, comfortable. Um, I think that... The person this will go to will much appreciate. I think so too. Hopefully, um, and yeah, it's been a joy to work. Uh, George really does write a nice pattern. Yes, he does. Um, he gives you all the um, what do you call it? All the modifications tools. and stuff, and yeah, he gives you the tools you need to modify. Right. And I'll and show you to you stretched out as soon as I reach the end of the row. Um, which means I'll probably let you go ahead and talk about. All right, I'm going to talk about the uh, my absence square. I haven't named it. That's the name of the pattern. It's by Anastasia Zatel. What, Anastasia the what Nitt? square? Absence. Um, I guess as in terms of you lost somebody. Oh, okay. Um, 
I haven't named it yet. It's another one of her, it's kind of like a test cal, I guess, where we're testing the, the blocks uh, for the afghan she's going to be putting together. And I'm doing more of the cal version because sometimes I can keep up and sometimes I just can't. This is called the absence square. And I started it, and then I, I started a couple days ago, I think, just before we got ready for Maryland, and so I had to stop. And this is how far I got. It's supposed to be 12 inches square. This is in the Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn, neons. I see, I thought purple. that was neon. And the pattern's really pretty. I like it. But I do have to pay attention to make sure I, I'm doing the right row. It's not hard. I just have to make sure I'm doing the right row. And I really like it. It's um, it's kind of addictive. I still think my favorite one is the one I did last week, the uh, ripples. There. I don't like looking at, not being able to see what I'm doing. I, okay, Sherbert, Miss Lady Sherbert. Why did you I, push her? I did not. In fact, she fell on me. There we go. Okay. Um, it's an addictive pattern. Uh, I, I like better her. Um, her waves, I think it was something wave that I, I did last week, the blue one. But I do like, not blue, lavender. They're, they're all purple. Lavender. I like this one as well. And I think this will make a nice, nice uh, addition to her to her blanket. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it works up when I'm finished as well um, in the blanket. Oh, poop doodles. <laughs> Pooping doodles again? Pooping doodles. So as I said, this is fun. I'm enjoying it. it. It's warm. I think that this blanket will be very warm. And I will have to see what kind of joins I do because I found with that one block that I have not yet pieced together that there are like 10 million joins out there to <laughs> join the squares. And I just see which one. What I like do you think to. will be the join that you go with? Um, I'm kind of leaning toward a slip stitch join, or maybe maybe a granny square join. Granny square join? Yeah. It's um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's, I don't know enough about it to explain it. I have to go back and look. But there, somebody had posted a link on Anastasia's site, on her RAF site, talking about, she, list, she linked a place that had 10 different ways to join granny squares or squares. And I made sure I went there and looked at that. There's, there's just a ton of them. I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't want to do anything too, too um, complicated because I just want to get them put together. So they look nice and they don't have funny little puffs and things in the middle of their of the rows, you know, where I, I didn't do it right. So that's all I need to worry about. And this is in my that's this, a clover bird. this is my Clover Bird Mickey Mouse medium bag. That's where the project I'm currently working on in. The other squares are in my makes my bag large turtle bag. See turtle bag. Oh that's what you meant when you said that you had multiple bags for one project. project. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I have like 10 stitches in its row, so I'm almost to the point where I could show. This, you really don't get the full effect unless you see it stretched out. It really is pretty. The design is very nice. And that's why I wanted to get to the end of the row before I showed it to you because Nothing I was like, faster. Should I say something that annoys you? <laughs> <laughs> I have two more stitches. You don't have to annoy me. Darn it. <laughs> there we go. Hey, I thought that was pretty fascinating. I'm going to let Margaret off this row. And move up my sticky note and my pad. There we go. Okay, so this is actually, I think this is quite worth waiting for the. Oops, sorry. Oh, I don't wow, know, that's shit. like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did a little step. There we go. Look at that. You can see that. You can see where the large heart is starting to show, is starting to form. If you put it too close, I won't be able to see it, I don't think. Well, I, the light's almost... Maybe I should tr there, that's a little better. Because yeah. light... You can see it right here. Yeah. And over... Well, those smaller ones here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's not doing it justice. No, it's not. And it's that's why it's a lot more green than it is blue. Um, there you see the little hearts a little bit better. But, yeah, he's doing a beautiful design. It has this lattice effect. Oh, there! Look at that down at the bottom. That's that's pretty good. Um, and on the sides, Very I'm nice. a little over halfway through. Um, and this could probably be done with just a bulky yarn. But this is why I wanted you to see the full effect because you want to get the full effect of the heart in the center mm -hmm. with it folded over. It's just gorgeous. 
It's a really lovely pattern. I've been enjoying it. It's fairly intuitive. I mean, you still have to follow in the chart. For those of you who are curious about how I particularly do the chart, oh, it's not a free pattern. Um, I, um, I mark, it's a chart, so it's drawn out on a graph. I think I can see that without giving away too much. Um, and I divide in my head the stitches into, I think I did it in tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, into tens. And I put markers on my project, separating the stitches into tens. And I make my sticky notes about as wide as 10 stitches. So I move my sticky note down every 10 stitches as I'm working on them. So if I have to stop in the middle row, I can. And I know when I've reached at the end of 10 stitches on here because I'll hit a stitch marker. So I'll knit, hit a stitch marker, move my sticky note to the next 10 stitches, knit what's underneath that sticky note, uh, hit a marker, move the sticky note again to the next 10 stitches, knit um, what's under that sticky note, and keep going. Um, but And then if I have to leave in the middle of a point, I know that I'm on those particular 10 stitches that are over my sticky note. It's a system that works for me, plus marking off my rows in my notebook. So, um, yes, I have very unique systems for everything. But... That is that one. All um, right. I do have another project. This one got talked about kind of in halves because you really couldn't see the effect without it being done. Oh, oh that's right. Okay, gotcha. Um, so the, it's weird. I don't usually separate like that. Um, okay, so. I'm going to move out of frame. I don't like eating in front of them. I do it all the time. I must be a very rude person, partner. Hi, this is just my show now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, still in my limelight. So, that's what I do. This is the Scarlet Scotsman. See how I ignore the statement, <laughs> um, which is the Flying Scotsman pattern. Don't choke. I don't feel like doing the Heimlich. Oh, I'm not sure. at work right now. <laughs> um, by Susan Ashcroft. I'm using US 7 needles. And um, the main yarn is the. Spinning Fates Moira in the colorway Let Heaven Nature Sing, which is from a band by, a band, <laughs> a BAM, um, I can't remember what BAM stands for, a uh, bag a month, I think, I think you're right, um, by Needs My Bag, and then the secondary yarn, which I have not started to use yet, although I used it in a different project before, is the Lang Yarns Devil Magic in the colorway 60 Rust Gold Forest and Wine. Wine, 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 wine. Yes, I know you wine. You wine. You want some cheese that wine? Ah, there you go. Okay, so mm. I was wondering why it always seems much smaller than you here is because Daddy's cushion is so deep. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, you do always sit on Dad's side. So yeah. if I wanted to see him teeny, I'd have to sit on that side. But. Look at those bright red markers, bright red and blue markers. Yep. Red, yeah. white markers. Red, white, and blue. You, you, you do know your colors, right? I do. Right? I do. It is moving along. Very pretty tie. I think it actually looks redder in the camera. Or monitor. That, it looks like it has purple in it. Um, which it doesn't. It looks like it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's this very... Because we're using strictly natural light. We don't have any light. On and no, we don't. Here, we're just using natural light. So uh, this is kind of like a brick, brick red, rust, brick rust red. It's real pretty. Um, yes, it is. It's very pretty. It's got slight variations in it. Very nice. And then I've been making this my first project. It's been nice. It's been fun. Every once in a while, when I'm not paying attention, I'll find a yarn over that to correct. But <laughs> <laughs> practice, right? Indeed. Okay, what bag is that in? Oh, that's in my turtle bag, which is a plover bird bag. Okay. In my M&M's New York bag. I love my M&M's New York bag. It's the only thing that fits my blanket. Um, sorry about the zipper. I am working on my lattice trellis afghan using an eye hook, I believe. 
Did that get a fair amount of work? I got a little bit of work since the last two podcasts. I didn't really do anything last time. I didn't show it last time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This is. I can't read this. I think it's an eye hook. Let me look. Let me turn my pattern around. But it has gotten a fair amount of work. Here's the little doohickey right here. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. There's the doohickey. So I got about two inches all the way across. Thank you. Yeah. And I talked to my husband about whether or not I should just finish this. Um, ball that I'm using in the impeccable and move Wasn't on. his opinion? I don't care. Well, no, I asked him again. I put it down on the floor. And he said, I don't know if he was paying attention or just answering me something. But <laughs> um, I think he wants me to do one more um, impeccable. So that's what you're going to be seeing with this is the impeccable for a while. This is the front of it here. So you can see the kind of design there. Just kind of a, makes me think of a lattice or a trellis, so that's why it's called lattice trellis afghan. And I'm using impeccable right now, which is the pink, and this variegated yarn down here. Is it a trellis usually by its nature latticed? Yes, okay. I think so. Well, so no, I think a trellis. No, 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 that's not true because a lattice can be just a piece of lattice. Okay. Um, but wouldn't a trellis always be latticed? Yes, but it wouldn't always be a trellis. Mm. I mean, trellis, to me, I think of a trellis as A equals B, but is not equal C. Something like that. Don't, I don't want to be confused with algebra. It's too early. Um, this colorway is the um, Yarn Bees Daniel Yarn in the Dawn colorway, and that will be what I'm finishing it off with when I get to that point. And I do have, I was wondering what I would do when I finished this, and I, I actually have something in mind. So I kind of wanted to get this done, not because I don't enjoy the project, but because I'm ready to do something different and work with some other colors. And this is my own pattern. It comes out of my own head. And, yeah, I guess that's about all I can say about that. I'm a little, like I said, I'm a little off today. I don't do well with sudden change. <laughs> excuse Sorry. you. Yes. Yes, excuse me. Yes. I have excuses. Okay. You have lots of excuses. Okay, that's all for whips for me. I think that's all for whips for me, too. Let me just put this in my bag here because I don't want to work on it just yet. There's too much going on for me to be sidetracked. Okay. Do you have any graphic novel? I don't think so. Hold on. Let me just check and make sure I got everything. No, I don't have any FOs. I do not have any rough drafts. I do have writer's block if you don't mind me going on to that okay, before we fine. forget. I have gone through my projects and culled some more out. I am not, I have uh, frog my blue phoenix mitts, um, a pair of mitts I started working on almost two years ago, I guess. The pattern was given to me by Tangerine 8, who's Casey, and I do intend to make them again. It's just that I don't see me doing it right now, and my gauge is probably different. So I'm going to restart. I only had about this much on one cuff done. So I, I will go back to that one. I, I will. But... For now, it's frogged. I have taken the yarn out, and I will do it at some other time. My sorbet scarf, the pretty pink scarf for my Kratzy class, again, another one that was just too long unworked. Maybe another time, maybe not. I don't, I don't really know. Um, so I got rid of that. And my Cosmo the Chihuahua, I am not sure why I started that. I love doing toys. This one was just not something I wanted to do. It's a beautiful pattern. I love it. It's adorable. I may do it another time. But I may not. I may not. I just decided no, and it was just sitting there and eating up my yarn and eating up my bag. So the empty fiber fill. Yeah. So I took it apart, removed the fiber fill. Didn't have any eyes in it yet, so I didn't lose the eyes, and it's gone. So I got rid of those. I feel a lot better about that now. I can do other things. Um, amazing, amazing how brain frogging mm -hmm. can be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to do your graphic novel, feel free. Okay. So. Um, I went to get um, more cross stitching stuff from um, sorry I have an itch right there um, to get more cross stitching stuff from um, cross country stitching online. First of all, the bag I decided to keep cross stitching in was an old knitting bag. I'd stand up to pull it into the video screen. Um, one that I had hi coffee. Um, one that I had picked up. When I first started crocheting, actually. 
Hi, sweetheart. She's not getting enough attention. It's a big bag. <clears throat> it has all my um, DMC floss and all my cross-stitching goodies. Down. So you didn't have any FOs? No FOs. Okay. Um, and... In the Nightwing bag is a 1 Corinthians 13 cross stitch. Oh, I put my patterns in a notebook. And I have a, um, this particular frame, um, can sit on my lap. It's, uh, I don't have it set up to do that right now. I don't feel like setting it up right now. Oh, actually, I need to open this up so you can see the how it, the work is going so far. So I will have to open it up, but not to put it together. There. there it is. I just don't want to lose my stuff. There we go. Making a lot of progress. So. Oh. See. So you can start seeing this beautiful. Yeah, the pattern's starting to come into fruition. I'm about, as soon as I finish these, the um, little flower detail down by the heart, I'll be able to start the ribbon that's going to wrap around. So, um, a lot, it's a lot of stitch here, stitch there kind of stuff. Like I'll do one or two stitches and then I need to weave in and start a new color. It's interesting. I like the feel of uh, cross-stitch. Yeah, it's very textural. Um, it makes me happy. You could probably do Braille with cross-stitch. Probably. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I've enjoyed this. Um, it's been making progress. I've done nothing on my cross-stitch. <laughs> Didn't have a time to do anything. Well, thankfully, do we know one upstairs? <coughs> mm -hmm. Because I have another one to speak on. And I think I mentioned the idea of it briefly. You have to move out of frame? Mm-hmm. You're moving out of frame? <coughs> I am moving out of frame. I guess okay. I should have said something. Yeah. So, first things first, it is the Elsa and Anna cross-stitch pattern. I'm making it for Davina. It'll look like that when it's done. Um... Not for her birthday. No, just because. Oh, uh, that reminds me, when we get done with that, I have to talk about the uh, potiversary a little bit. Yeah. So, right now, because I started from the center, I think I'm somewhere in their hair. Oh, this is another lap thing. You're always in somebody's hair. The bath is interesting to look at. <laughs> so, um, it's not very interesting right now. It's uh, silvers and some tans and some browns, all in different shades. Um, and I think I have a little bit to go before I get to start on some purple. I think I saw some pur purple on the horizon. It looks like the Aslan yarn I picked up. Right now it does, yeah. yeah. Um, so I am looking forward to getting some more interesting colors. But the chart's nice and large. The um, designer really works with you. I'm been enjoying just the process of getting this worked on. Although I am looking forward to having some other colors. <laughs> Do you so want to put that on there? Have you, have you already showed that as a stash enhancement? You might want to leave it here. Oh, uh, well, that counts as running as a stash enhancement. Okay, well, they don't know what that is. That was a lap cross stitch frame. Okay. All right. Um, let me think. Oh, I did want, what was I going to tell them? Um, oh, about the potiversary. We are still in the process of figuring out the prizes for the Potiversary and how we're going to work that. We have hit over 200 members. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, we appreciate all your support and participation. And we have also hit um, over 100 episodes. Yes. This is episode 101. And uh, what was the other thing? Trifold. It was something else. Um, over 200 members of a year, a second year of podcasting. And um, 
the uh, over 100 episodes. Okay. Um, so we have those three things. So it's going to be, we're hoping it'll be fairly good size. We don't know what we're going to, we'll put up a thread as we get closer to uh, May 15th. It might not be right on that time, but um, we want to celebrate with you guys. Yeah. So we'll figure out what the prizes will be and let you know, and we'll put some kind right. of question thread up, and we'll, we'll have random number generators for that. In the meantime, we are now in, do you have stash enhancements that we're going to go to now? Well, I hit that with cross-stitching already. Was that all of it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I do want to do the autobiography and thank yous, and then we'll go on into the uh, stash enhancements, okay? Yeah, for some reason, I only did cross-stitch stuff for my stash enhancements this time around. Okay. Um, I'm sorry about the clicking. My writing, I did just shy, I did actually more than I thought. I did just shy of 500 words to the shared story, which I still have, uh, our shared story. And I looked up some, put together some prompts for the, um, my turn at the prompt uh, mistress for one of my writing groups. I will be doing that in two weeks' time, so I'm gathering prompts and thinking about prompts. So that's, I guess that counts kind of as writing. Um, acknowledgements, I do want to thank 10 Hours or Less for the Braided Bright Cal pattern that he created especially for our autism awareness Cal. Mm -hmm. want to thank Knitting My Bag and Plover Bird for the lovely bag they donated for prizes for the Cal. Cal. And uh, Juliana, who is um, Equal Opportunity Crafter, she, well that's her podcast group. I always forget. Yeah. I think it's she Juliana Jules Lund. Lund Jules, Jules, Lund Lund Jules Lunder. I always forget her name. I don't know why. Um, uh, for the gift of one of her patterns for our prize pool. And she's some nice patterns. She has some gorgeous patterns. Particularly sweater patterns. And she's predominantly knit, right? Yes. So she balances, I don't, I don't know if she crochets at all. She kind of balances our, um, we have one predominantly crochet and one predominantly knit. Yeah. So, um, and then we have um, the wonderful donations from Emily, who is Chana Pools, our other co-host. She has donated uh, three skins of yarn for two different people and a pattern from her sh from her own designs. Her, right. She has a shop, I believe, on Ravelry. Um, and then Sarah Jane, who has donated five patterns uh, from her from her shop. Lovely crochet patterns. I love them. Yeah. Hank's mom, who has uh, donated a skein of Malabrigo Lace Weight, and she's uh, a loyal viewer of ours, and we really appreciate um, that donation. There is one more donation that does not go into uh, this cow. It will be held back for the next cow, yes. for the one that deals with heart um, awareness or cardiac. cardiac. Um, we heard from Turbo Knitter 64, who is Kenneth from the Turbo Knitter po podcast. Turbo Knitter podcast. Um, okay. You need to check him out on YouTube. Sorry. I believe he's on YouTube or in his Rab group. Fantastic pod podcast. Yeah. And anyway, he has donated. Oh, what a generous donation! Three skeins of Cascade lace weight yarn for a prize pot for our next Cal Cal. Very awesome. Very awesome. I believe it's orange, from what I could tell on the um, kind of an orange e kind of colorway. I'm behind. But it's it's beautiful. They they are beautiful, and it is like enough to make a shawl or a sweater or something generous. It is gorgeous. So thank you very very much for that. But that will not be for the autism awareness. That will be for the um, for the next cal cal. Now, we are going to go into talking about stash enhancements, Maryland Sheep and Wool. If you're not interested in Maryland Sheep and Wool, um, we understand, and you can say goodbye, and we'll see you next week, we hope. If you are, okay, let's get into it. Uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool is fantastic. I went on Saturday. I my, worked. Yes, she Saturday. worked. Uh, I went on Saturday with my husband and my other daughter, with Davina, and it was very nice. We expected rain. Um, at least some rain, but there was no there was no rain, so we were happy about that. Uh, it didn't start having a little weather till after we left. We left probably about two thirty three o'clock. We got there a little later than I wanted to. We got there about nine thirty. Went directly to Miss Babs. It wasn't as difficult to get into Miss Babs this year as it was last year, but one did you arrive later last year? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it. Once we got, she had moved a little bit too. She was on a corner instead of in the middle. Um, once we got there, once she started buying things, the line to pay for it was like 30 to 45 minute wait. So my husband had gotten in line, and bless his heart, he's he's really he's sweet. Um, I had brought back, I think I brought back two or three skeins of yarn. He says, "That's all you want. We're not coming back here." 
we're, you know, we're going to go back to other places. So I went back and got more yarn. I said, you sure that's all you want? So I went back and got more yarn. <laughs> Needless to say, I kind of spent a lot of money. So you, all right, I'll stop laughing so you can see what I got. It's quite beautiful. Yes. Oh, before I do that, I'll just show you real quick. I got a whole bunch of crochet dude hooks, not from Miss Babs. I had ordered them from Amazon. From Amazon, and I got this is one of my um, DVDs for crocheting, and this is a crochet sweater studio, which is going to allow me to, from what I understand, to create garments that suit your shape. So I guess I can not only um, design, but also alter, which is good because I never get gauged for anything. Okay, now on to the good stuff. In the, okay. In my last year's Meryl Machika wool bag, tell you might want to move that because I'm going to put this down in front of me. Oh, okay. Okay. It was, it was very nice. Okay. Um, a lot of people milling about. I saw Emily Chain of Fools. I saw Emily from What You're Swatching. I saw. Oh, I got pictures taken with um, the Knit Girls. Um, Leslie, and Leslie and Lala, and that was a blast. They are the nicest people you ever want to meet. And they gave me one of these and one for Talia. It's kind of a stylus pen, you know, so you can write with it, and you can and you can use it as a uh, touch. Oh, that's good for your phone or whatever. So I really like that. And um, the podcaster meetup was very informal. It was several. You know, there were other people that. I met that I, I don't know their names or I can't recall them. I saw Max Nitz, Nicole. <laughs> she, Any yarn around her neck this time? No yarn around her neck this time. She was teasing me because I was teasing her. We were teasing her so much on the podcast. She's such a good sport. She truly is. Um, so we saw her there. I also, I, I apologize. I didn't have a chance to look up her name again. I was walking through the, through the, um, through the uh, main exhibition building going, back, going to look for yarn and stuff after Miss Babs. And I hear this. Miss Penhook and Needles! Miss Penhook and Needles! <laughs> and it was her. She's the sweetest sweetheart. I can't remember her name. She was spinning. And I got a picture of her. Um, unfortunately, the speed of what we had to do this, I don't have it available to give to Talia. Um, I'll try to put it up at a later date of this um, nice lady who was calling me and we talked for a little while. So that was fun. At Miss Babs, I picked up... Yeah, okay. Um... This is this is beautiful. This is Yazza Skein. All of my Miss Bats are Yazza Wood Skein. That's 560 yards each of light worsted or DK, depending on what you want to call it. This is the slate gray. I got four of these. And there's kind of a neat little story about this. I had had two of these. I only saw two of them. I was really worried that I would only be able to get um, maybe a shawl out of it or something. So I had picked up this other color, this is Vlad, thinking that would make a nice counterpoint to it. Well, like I said, my husband told me to go back. So I went back looking, and there was a young man there stocking things. And I, told, I was teasing him because I kept running into him wherever I went. And he said, oh, I was, I was looking for you. And I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, I have two more of these for you. So I have four. Definitely enough to make a sweater. And when I went back and checked to see what my size would take in yarn for a crocheted sweater, I realized that I could probably do with two and a half. So I will probably make a shawl uh, either with the Vlad or with the um, Babette I have from last year. So these, this is my first sweater's quantity. I got this from Miss Babs. I got the Vlad, just one, from Miss Babs. Absolutely gorgeous colors. I think I'm going to make a cowl or something out of that. And then I got three. And this, I, can, I think I can make a sweater even out of this one if I want to. Don't go to sleep on me. Hi. <laughs> three of these. So this, you should have seen Davina holding this. Every time I went back, somebody had to hold it when I went back because I didn't want to have Daddy to carry all. Possibly. Well, Daddy was taking pictures. So I had, she had all oh, this so yarn. It was yarn. She had all this yarn piled up in her hands, and it was so funny. So I have a picture of that, too, that I'll try to maybe post. So that, but that's not all. That's all from Miss Babs. I was bad. I really was. My husband said it's my mother's day gift. Isn't that nice? Um, and I didn't even enable. 
I got this. You knew I couldn't walk away without blue. It's, it's coming up very nicely in the morning. This is Reflections of Ro at Roclans, um, out of the dye pot yarn. It is 100% superwash merino wool, approximately 560 yards. This is fingering weight. And she said it was a tonal, so I'm looking forward to using this. I don't know yet what I'm going to do with it, but I'm looking forward to it because I love the color. And my last, I got things for each of the of the family members. My husband was a sweetheart. I got him a, um, oh. I got him a wood turned pen, and I got Davina a little angel with lambs, and I picked this up. It's gorgeous. This is Verdant Griffin. It's DK, uh, 280 or 260, 280 yards of DK weight yarn. This is for Talia. Yay! So that was my damage at uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool. I was sorry, <coughs> excuse me, to have missed uh, Nicole, Nikki Nicole from Nicolo Podcast. Yeah. She didn't know where it was, um, and she got there around 12. Nikki, you would have made the podcast. It was down in the lower corral, uh, to the podcaster meetup, and it was all the way down uh, past the main exhibition hall where there was a bunch of tents, and on the left there was sheepdog trials and things like that. I'm sorry I missed you. Maybe next year. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the fair as much as I did. Uh, I think I think that's just about it, except to let you know that I was watching Brochet, Brochet's podcast. I think that's how you say it, Celtic Lucas's podcast, his last one. And he was saying that he is uh, going to be making available painted eyes. He's opening an Etsy shop. So you might want to check out his podcast, check out his Etsy shop. I don't know what they are offhand. But I did want to give him a shout out for that because as a toy uh, maker, I am very interested in that. I know there are other toy makers who might also be interested in that. So that's Brochet uh, podcast that is Celtic Lucas. Uh, check him out. See if he, if you're interested in, in those kind of eyes. I, I saw the prototypes that he put on. They look really good. So, yeah. Anything you need to say? Business cards. Oh, the business cards. That's right. Yes, I forgot. I'm glad you said something. My husband... Um, sweetheart that he is, put together some something for us, our business cards, and I handed some of these out at Maryland Sheep and Wall. They seem to go over really well. And this is what they look like. Focus. Focus. Oh, come on. Focus. I don't know if you can see what it says. This is the caricature that's at the, the beginning of the podcast. There we go. And it has all the pertinent information. I have a bunch of these, so I gave them out. And Ty has a, a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, I gave them out at Maryland Sheep and Wool, and they seem to go over fairly well, so people will know where we're at. Yeah, so we're kind of excited about that. If you like one, let us know. Mm -hmm. um, they turned out very well. They turned out really well, and if you like one, we'll send you one. So, okay, I think that is it. Um, let's see. Um, just a little bit about that autobiography. I've been kind of into documentaries and commentaries for movies. I finished all three of the original Star Wars, which was fun. Um, watched the, the other three are not. <laughs> the other three are not Star Wars. No, not really. I'm a snob. Yes, you are. But um, yeah, I didn't work on a whole lot this week. It's just that what I did work on got a fair amount of love. Right. Right. Um. But that's all for me. Yeah, I think we're going to have to stop. It's actually a little it's less time than I thought it would be, considering everything. That yeah, we're we almost at an hour now. Yeah, but we've been going over without all the stash enhancements. Um, I don't want to have to carry the program when you're sleeping. <laughs> so. Well, at least I only got that tired when you were hitting stuff that I wasn't going to be able to. Right, right. And I think, I, I, I don't know, I think I, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know what it is. Um, so I, if, I, if I come up with it later, I'll... I'll just have to do something with next week. So, we yeah, are, I don't think we forgot anything. Oh, I want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day, although I guess we'll yes. probably be here Saturday, so I can do that again next week. At any event, we wish you a very happy week uh, full of knitting, crocheting, dyeing, spinning, whatever it is that you enjoy. And this is Penhook and Needles, Episode 101, and that's a wrap.